to the fourth day of the diversity week in FAUK. I think we have had a great week so far. We have been able to see a lot of different events. And we never want to lose the occasion to thank the people who were behind organizing this. Uh, Donna Maloku, our lecturer, and also Hana Tsakuri. We had a great concert yesterday, and yes, it was platform, so they are doing a great job. <laughs> uh, tonight we will have uh, a topic of discussion that unfortunately is not being discussed enough in Kosovo. Uh, the more diverse we get, the more diverse topics we have to discuss. And the AUK community, of course, is a diverse community. We welcome every kind of topic for discussion, and we offer the debate and platform for debate. So, uh, we will begin today by watching a movie, it is called Beyond the Rainbow, and then we will have a discussion with her, as we always do. I will pass the floor now to Ivana, who will discuss a little bit uh, further about the, the, the way we will have this discussion and other details of this event. Yes, thank you, Ilya, for great welcome words. Uh, we have uh, uh, one guest with us at the moment. Other two are coming, they work, so uh, do expect them in, let's say, 30 minutes, I hope. Benny, uh, you might stand up just so people can see you for a moment. Uh, uh -huh. Arjun Taylor, the founder of the new NGO uh, Libertas dealing with the LGBTIQ issues. Uh, as Ilir said, a very important topic for Kosovo and region generally. And we are happy to have him uh, with us uh, tonight. Thank you. Um, also, discussion uh, that will follow up after the documentary is uh, we have uh, thought of it as uh, it should be shaped according to what you would like us to uh, make of it. Meaning that I, we really appreciate if you pose questions, if you uh, participate in creating it in that way in which it will be most interesting and most informative for you. So, uh, since moment one, please uh, uh, do participate and help us to make this conversation and as Spen said, this is one of the reasons why we wanted it in the children. We wanted it to be more um, uh, intimate in a way to say so, uh, because it should be a conversation among us and not a typical us as uh, guests and those who are here uh, talking to you. So please enjoy the documentary and uh, Ismet, um, why this topic? Actually, I'm not a producer, I'm the director only, and I was, this, this was done like 2006 or 2007, that's like four years ago, and yeah, it, it was my question actually, why this topic, when they called me, I said, uh, Casey Cooper Johnson is the producer, the producer of this documentary, and he called me and said, Ismet, we have a great topic, can we meet? And I said, yes. <coughs> and yeah. Actually, we were having coffee. He said, uh, we are dealing with a very sensitive issue. Are you ready for a challenge? And I said, yes. And he said, we have to make a documentary about homosexuality. <laughs> and then I said, mm, I'm sorry, I'm not one of them. I don't want to make a documentary. And I really feel ashamed of that right now. So <coughs> I'm, uh, I was not feeling very comfortable doing that in these circumstances. So now, looking back, uh, four years from now, uh, I'm uh, not feeling very comfortable for that answer. So that's it, shortly. Mm -hmm. And um, after this initial, uh, let's say, uh, after the start of uh, filming and everything, yeah, how was the I, was, uh, I realized. I realized that uh, uh, I was suffering from homophobia, which was uh, something that happened at that time. And then, um, dealing with this, uh, I realized that there was no problem. The problem was inside my head. Okay. And I started to cure myself somehow. I said, uh, this shouldn't be a problem. And I, I, I met these people, and there was like everything cool with it. And now, I mean, I didn't have a problem to continue with doing it. Actually, first uh, we went uh, through interviews, and uh, uh, we were very comfortable uh, having these interviews. And then later we arranged this uh, meeting with homosexuals in very hidden place uh, because they wanted to be to appear like sheriffs. And then 
uh, we were like four of us there, uh, and when they show up, I was expecting someone else, and uh, I, I have kind of built them in my mind, uh, and then the normal people show up, and uh, actually they're very friendly, and there was nothing. Uh, I, I, I'm serious. Seriously, I'm feeling very uh, ashamed for that. What happened? Uh, and then my opinion that I had about homosexuals. So okay. no, I mean, I have no problem with it at all. We'll go back to that topic. Mervete, uh, how do you see documentary uh, in sense of representation of the gay community? Partially, I don't think that the documentary is telling really the truth of the gay community in Kosovo. Okay, what do you First mean of all, mm -hmm. the actor is being somebody with long hair, which is very stereotyped, and the moment he cuts the hair, that he becomes straight. Mm -hmm. So it's very stereotypical, and uh, I don't think that's that's one one of the things. Since I've seen it, it's my first time seeing the mm -hmm. documentary. Second, most of the people over there, they were talking about all the victimization and all poor us, and it's so hard. And then you have these people who are basically talking over there about their mental state, and they're not entitled to, such as just the person that you met. I understand that that's the opinion of some people, but do we really need to, to represent that part only? And it doesn't represent me, as simple as that. Okay. I mean, we didn't want to represent anybody. We just wanted to uh, uh, people discuss about this issue after seeing the film. We didn't want to bring any conclusion that this is right and this is bad. We are artists. So artists are not there to bring the conclusion. We are just uh, uh, to, to, to set up a topic, and then the people can discuss about it. I agree, but the thing is like, you should give information that are less stereotypical. Yeah, but That's this, all I'm saying. These are, like, these just are not the people that were selected from them. Like, they gave the, the actor, names. Though, said, no. I don't think the actor was selected. I'm not talking about the, everyone, people, the people you in the shadow. Interrupt. I'm talking okay, about question. the actor who was with long hair. And then it was represented, from my point of view, as a disabled person as well, because he had the shadow talking to him all the time. And then he cuts the hair and he becomes straight, which is so stereotypical. Sorry for you men that have long hair here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we already have one question, uh, please. So, hi, my name is Bruciana, I'm a senior. Uh, I wanted to congratulate you guys. Uh, so Casey is not here, the producer, but um, you touched a really sensitive uh, topic. And uh, you said that the, the, the whole documentary doesn't show the truth. Uh, so what is the truth? We're normal. That's the truth. Okay. And it doesn't depend from my hair if it's uh, small I mean, this or long. Shows, this shows as well, I'm sorry for interrupting, but this shows as well that you guys are normal. I mean, uh, this is uh, the documentary that was uh, intended to be politically correct in terms of uh, uh, showing uh, people as normal. There is no we and you. I mean, you are saying that we are normal, so who's not normal here? I mean, uh, so, uh, please, I mean, yeah, we don't have to, yes, like, uh, to land, uh, divide groups, normal, uh, normal people. No, no, no. Well, My question was, was more about the victimization part. Uh, do you feel uh, discriminated in the workplace, in schools? That, not the physical aspect of... Well, uh, we, talk, we don't want to talk individuals here, you know, because if we talk about the, uh, the whole community, we have different, different issues with dealing with workplaces, the social life and everything. Uh, what I wanted to add about the documentary was that uh, it was a big step, you know. I mean, now if we, we make more documentaries, maybe we'll improve and put something else, but I mean, it, it was a big step and maybe the circumstances at the time was as they were and they had no other ways of doing it. Of course, there are some, you know, misleadings there and here, you know, but I mean, the message is there, the sh it shows a little bit of the reality, but not to such individuals, but how the uh, gay community in Kosovo is and how it should be. I mean, I, I didn't hear anywhere saying there that, is there any solution, how we're gonna change, you know, the, the minds of people or the opinion about it or anything, so it's, that's the only thing I was a bit concerned, but it was okay. I mean, 
True. Yeah. I mean, I, I believe that uh, a big, huge step is the fact that somebody did a documentary, and I applaud for that. Yeah. I really applaud for that, no matter, just as what a matter of putting the topic out there. So it's great. I just would like I to add I just think something. that it should be have done easily. I really don't like stereotypes, and not only about gay, but anything, like stereotypes about gender or race or anything. Stereotypes oh. are bad, and that was stereotypical. What would you, yeah, what but would but you like to uh, see differently done in the documentary? I told you I would, I would delete that screen of cutting the hair. That was, okay. excuse me, ridiculous. Any of the issues you would particularly like to see there? No, I would like them to talk a little bit more about the rights and uh, a little bit to be a little bit more pushy in the sense that we're not here to listen to you, do you support us or you don't support us, but we're here to tell you that we do have the right. So we are here and you just have to accept it. Let's put it like that. So it's... Mm -hmm. yeah. can, I just, can I just <laughs> add something? I have something to add very shortly. So very shortly. Group. Actually, uh, the, the, the target group uh, were, was not, uh, I mean, we're not homosexuals when we did this documentary because uh, these guys, they know every, everything important? about, about their, mm -hmm. their, their selves. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to target uh, people who don't want to hear a thing about, about it. Okay. So we just wanted them to offer this so they can uh, discuss about it. Great, we have two yeah. questions. I think the reason it was a stereotype is because when they interviewed the coastal people, they didn't even want to talk about the subject. All they know about gay people is the stereotype. That's why they represented that within the film. Mm -hmm. And I think, like they said, it's one movie. You cannot hit what every gay person is. It's just one aspect of it. And secondly, I think the long hair was actually pretty... What? Can you stand up? I'm sorry for interrupting. Yeah. And I think the long hair was actually a pretty good symbol because, yeah, he may cut that hair and he may find freedom, but he's still gay. He claims he doesn't find happiness. And though he might look like a man now with that short hair and not the stereotype, he's still gay. Yeah, but uh, uh, I would like to comment on that. I agree, but uh, to a certain point, because the truth is that he said, I am free, but I don't have happiness. And trust me, for homophobic, very extreme homophobic, happiness of gay people is the least thing they care about. So uh, that's the thing. And yes, it's true that we had to do something, but that's, that's the problem because Kosovo does not know much about homosexuality. And if we put stereotypes out there, people are going to start believing and thinking that that's how they are. Well, that's why I am against the stereotype. How do you think you should, you would approach the coastal people with this issue? By Maybe. giving them information that there are people with long hair and short hair and I mean, rich and tall and small and short and they're... I think what she's trying to say is that we don't have to make apologies for uh, people in general, whoever they are, don't have to make apologies for being who they are. And I think that's really important. And we should never ask people to apologize for the way they are. They are just that way. And I'm still surprised that there's some strange reactions that I've gotten. And for me, it's certainly totally different from where I've spent some time in the UK. And it's a complete, I can't believe that someone would even question someone's being. So uh, I, was, I, I think I agree with you when you say you can't make apologies for who you are. You can't see yourself as a victim. You are who you are, and everyone else just has to deal with it. It's not their problem. Um, yeah. yeah, please. Go ahead. Uh, when we did the interviews, the, when we interviewed the homosexuals, they were always uh, telling the dark side of the story. We were trying to get something bright from it, and they're always saying uh, our life is totally dark, or there is no bright side of our life. And so this is the problem, that we couldn't get anything good. So th that's why that's we... Why the movie is... It's not... A I, mean, I, 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 I don't think it's, a good, it's about good or bad. Um, and the, I think this is right, saying that the movie was a bit stereotypical. And because it... Uh, portrays, for example, gay people as a very feminine and as people who have eternal, they have struggles with their sexual orientation and identity, and that might be some, sometimes the case, but it's not always the case, and that was, you know, 
what it lacks, it lacks more sort of complexity. And just sexuality is a complex thing, and, and human sexuality is a complex thing. But also, it lacks a sort of the political motivation of how how do we change this? I mean, how uh, homosexuals right now are not in the map. They are not. This, the homose hom homophobia is not discussed, even though we have lots of acts of of severe uh, violence against homosexuals. And yes, you're right, the life of homosexuals in Kosovo is difficult. I think it's difficult. I know many, for, for a lot of them, it depends how, um, how strong they are and how well established they are and how independent they are. But, you know, for, for majority of them, it's, it's a lot of discrimination. So I think it didn't tackle more the sort of discrimination part. It talked a little bit about it, or it didn't talk about sort of the political aspects of getting organized and getting uh, get, getting them fight for their right. So, I mean, that, that's, it, there is an issue there about so. Hi, I'm, I'm Adam. I'm from Australia. Um, and I grew up in Tasmania when it was illegal to be gay and when we used to be bashed. There was one gay club and uh, things, things changed very quickly. Um, I don't think I don't think this part of this session is to critique the movie as such. No, I think that, I think that would be a slippery slide. Wanted because, to move from. <laughs> yeah, I think what we what we yep. the issue is people representing their points of view. Now, as a gay activist myself from Australia, I ran one of the largest charities in Australia for eight years, so I know about this sort of stuff. Um, and I used to have people come into me and express points of view about being gay that would horrify me. Mm -hmm. But I lived in a bubble of acceptance, and I was out there. I was on television. Everyone knew I was gay, but. These people, they were speaking from their personal experience, and I don't think we should critique that. We should talk about the issues it raises in a society, not say that their point of view is not our point of view as a gay person necessarily. So perhaps we should be talking about the issues that are raised, the issues like society's attitude towards gay and lesbian people, the way gay and lesbian people, some gay and lesbian people see themselves, issues about um, religion and, and leaders in society and their views and how that can influence change. They're the sort of stuff that the movie raised for me and I thought in a really good way. I, I would just emphasize what I'm saying about I didn't necessarily agree with all their points of view and I found them quite disturbing but you have to accept that's their reality of their lives and that's tragic and sometimes it's happy. Any comments on that? Agree. Uh, I wasn't really talking about the documentary as such. I'm talking more in reality because, as I said, I think that it's a great thing that the documentary has happened, and it should show the point of view in the, of the reality of Kosovo, such as a priest or Muslim or Catholic or whatever, and even general population. I just think that uh, we should not put stereotypes out there. That's why I was mentioning documentary, and I started from there. But agree, those things are people's point of view, and everybody should have their point of view. But yet again, if your point of view is going to harm me, then I'm sorry, you're not entitled to your point of view. And that's my right. That's, that's the, the part that... Uh, but let's move to some of the issues that definitely are uh, mentioned in the documentary. Okay, we mentioned victimization, and uh, for you, that's, um, to say so, wrong. It's a bit too much yep. represented. What would you say? Um, I'm sure that you would agree that uh, certain understanding and opinion that society uh, has uh, toward the uh, gay community in Kosovo here, mm -hmm. uh, it does manifest on the quality of a personal life, and to say so, living normal, everyday life. Agree? And, uh, yeah. Agree, but uh, again, that's not only about homosexuals, that's about everything. In Kosovo, we're going through a change that nothing where it's different, it's really being accepted. Mm -hmm. So definitely being gay, uh, and not homosexual, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, whatever, which makes you different from the most of the people, uh, people harassing you most of the time, it does influence your quality of life, which means you will not go out as often, you will not have as many friends as you would usually have. But when I say it's too much of victimization is that I wouldn't like to be put only in that way because Kosovo did progress somehow. And we cannot just say the only this part because still there are laws that protects, there are people who are 
uh, who are uh, being uh, better in the sense who limps very easily as being gay, lesbian, or bisexual, or transgender, or whatever, even though we don't have many. I don't know many transgender, let's put it like that. But there are people as such. So uh, too much victimization, I feel like if you, it's like this. If you only talk about bad things, poor me, poor me, poor me, I couldn't do this because I'm lesbian, I'm gay. I couldn't do this because of this. The chances that you'll be more discriminated, it's out there. When you don't give people the choice of like discriminating you, but you move on with your life, people will see the other parts of you, which means you're a student or you're a high school student or you're smart or you're stupid or whatever, but they will see the other parts, which is not only that. Sorry, I thought that it's a chill room, that's why I'm talking about this. Yes, I just wanted to make some comments. Yes. For those who don't know me, I'm I teach public policy here for the last seven years, and every year I do a week of classes when I talk about liberty as a government goal, talking about how people feel about gay, lesbian communities in Kosovo. And I think the biggest problem that Kosovo has is that we are very liberal in image, but very conservative deep inside. And this is true for the young people as well. We like to look European, but deep inside, we're not that liberal. And uh, this, the question that I ask is, would you think that it's okay to organize a gay parade in Pristina? <laughs> <laughs> and people would say, hmm, yeah. And the, the way I sense it is that if it would be televised and everybody would watch us because of this international image that we as Kosovars fear all the time, <coughs> probably <coughs> nothing would happen. But deep inside, I think that we uh, see gays or homosexuality as a disease. And there are two types of how we can see it. It's, it's a virus disease or it's a genetic disease. A virus disease is one that we have to fight because it can be cured. A genetic disease is something that, sorry it happened to you, it's okay, you can live with it, but don't I don't like really it. like it. <laughs> no, I don't see acceptance at a society level, and I see our legislation far more advanced than our society actually is. Uh, currently, we have a contradiction in our laws because, of course, our constitution says that almost you know we cannot discriminate based on the sexual orientation. But the law on the family in Kosovo says that marriage is uh, a union between a man and a woman. And if, it was, if this was in the United States, and this is where I would criticize the uh, NGOs mm -hmm. that are working to promote uh, gay and lesbian issues, is that someone would actually challenge that. Would go and try to get married in a municipality. Municipality would deny it, obviously, because there is a law on family. Nobody would allow them to get married. And then the couple sues them in a constitutional court. And then we would force the constitutional court to have their say. Well, um, uh, you know, and, and, and the constitutional court, I'm sorry to say, they would choose what is politically acceptable. But I think we would have a debate. Because these issues, you never reach a consensus. We've seen that in much more advanced democratic societies. These issues divide the society. But this is how you advance these issues. Otherwise, they get stuck in small communities. You know, it's good that we talk here at AUK, but can you really organize this in University of Pristina? Can you go around Kosovo? I don't think so. I don't think people would get beaten, but still, it's quite a taboo topic. So in that sense, you know, how do we get from this trap? Because I think it's far worse than what we're seeing in Serbia. I really believe that, Serbia or any other place. Because there, you have this polarization of society pro and against, and people are debating it, and they're going to have to make a choice. But in Kosovo, because we want to look liberal, we seem like we're doing much better, but we're very conservative deep inside, and we're going to postpone this issue for a much longer time than we actually need. Well, uh...
organization is not functioning yet. We are not about to uh, establish one, hopefully January 2012. And uh, we'd like to get ideas actually how we would function because there was an organization there and I don't know if it's still functioning or not. I have no contacts with them so far. Um, marriage. You mentioned marriage. It's, a, it's, it's the same thing in Kosovo. You know, marriage is rather respectful. <laughs> Uh, we don't want to jump to marriage. I mean, there are like more other issues present, like having a gay club in Pristina, or a uh, place when gay people can meet, uh, and other things that will follow. If I just may add, marriage. It, the marriage is not that we didn't think or we didn't know that the way to do the marriage and to prove it it's by going to the municipality and then suing this municipality and then going to the Constitution. constitutional court where most probably we will win because it is about the face of the others. That's why Kosovo progressed all this time because of international presence and let us look good. Let us have the interdiscrimination law. Let us have this. But the situation is this. Uh, community in itself is not ready to get married. Gay, okay. gay community, gay LGBT community in Kosovo is not ready to get married, first thing. Second, uh, if community is not ready, then why do you put all these things in place? We worked a lot in this laws, as, as, as organizations, as individuals, as whatever. We worked a lot, and partially the reason why they are there is because of our work. Why did we work for the laws? It's because we believe that to change the behavior of people, there are only two ways. One is awareness <coughs> raising, which is a it's long process, very long process, and second is forces. And these are two ways of behaving, basically making somebody behave in a certain way or another, well known in everywhere in the world. Like if, if you want a clean, clean environment, Either you teach people how to keep it clean, or you punish them for making it dirty. So for Kosovo, at that time, it was at that time it was a good start to start with the laws and make progress over there because that was easier. It was unbelievable for us to think that we are going to have a meeting like this, talking about this issue and not having a back door to run away. Okay. So that's why we have the law. So at least we knew that when we will go in meetings like this, if somebody harasses me or makes problems to me, I have the law to protect me. And the community is not ready for the marriage. Or like, let's put it like this, gay for me. It's not ready. The community, LGBT community in itself doesn't want to have, I haven't seen them wanting to have a, a parade. They're not ready to have a parade. So the process of awareness raising of the general community, it's a long process. And I think we just started. And it will Should take a little bit longer. Yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, any new comment from the audience? So if it's a long process, what is your goal? What is your objective? The film brought up a lot of issues, but I kept thinking, so what's, what are we looking for? What do we want? What do we want to see happen? What's our dream? What's our imagination? What is the future? Well, can I maybe shape it uh, how or better, what kind of attitude or help or fight to say so should happen or uh, according to you is something that can help um, LGBTIQ community in Kosovo definitely, as a next step. Definitely a little bit more, but let me try to answer. The goal is for LGBT community to be able to live their life the way they want it all of them and not only just people who are economically dependent and tough enough to or who had the chance to be raised in a very educated family but even that is not a clue because even very educated family can have problems so the goal is that the goal is that because everybody wants to have the free